Next, a tour of the Federal Emergency Management Agency field office in New York City. The office is the command center for the federal government's recovery effort in the wake of the World Trade Center attack. We're in uh, Lower Manhattan. We're at um, a city office building where the Department of Motor Vehicles used to be. New Yorkers know this. Um, um, in Lower Manhattan, about um, eight blocks from the site of the World Trade Center, um, we're um, on the edge of Chinatown, um, and we have the third floor of this building. What's happening here? Um, this is the disaster field office. It's the same. Um, it's the same function, the command center, as you saw when we were at Pier 90. But now, um, considering this is January, we are in recovery. When we talked earlier, we were, we were in response. What does that mean in terms of FEMA's activities? Well, um, it means that our support to the state and the city um, at this point is financial working out how much money individuals are eligible for and getting it to them, uh, working out how much the state and the city are eligible for, for emergency costs and for rebuilding and for the debris removal um, operation, and um, also continuing to make sure that the city gets all the support they need from other federal agencies, like EPA is still doing air monitoring and we're paying for that. Uh, but until this time the city is, is ready to take over that function, we're happy to do it. You said now your responsibility is financial as compared to what? Well, um, when you saw us earlier, we were bringing in federal assets to help the city. We brought in um, urban search and rescue teams, which are you know mobile fire departments uh, to, to help at the site. We brought in mash type hospitals from um, um, HHS, we brought in lots and lots of technical assistance, we brought in lots and lots of assets, um, but right now the kind of assets that the city needs from us um, is shrinking as the city regains its very strong capability to do a whole wide range of recovery. How is this office organized? Well, um, it's, it's organized, it's a, it's a federal state, FEMA state disaster field office. Um, on the FEMA side, there's a federal coordinating officer, Ted Monette, and I'm his deputy. Um, and on the state side, there's a state coordinating officer. And we have all the program people and the city and um, the other federal and state agencies and voluntary agencies that we need to uh, do our job. Can we take a look around? Oh, sure. Okay. Sure. You lead the way. And okay. All right. We change locations because um, that was a commercial shipping pier that we were, we were on, as you know. And, um, you know, ships are, becoming, are, are coming back into New York Harbor, plus the city had other commitments for that. Also, um, I mean, that was two football fields. We didn't need that space. And, you know, it was unique um, in terms of security, but it was also kind of isolated, you know. <laughs> As we walk, talk a little bit about the security. I remember when oh, okay. I approached your office in the days after the attack, there were bunkers with military personnel mm -hmm. with large guns. I didn't see that outside yeah, today. Right. Well, we do have our security force here, um, as you can see. And, of course, we have a very close relationship with the New York City um, Police Department. Um, but at this site... Um, it's a different. It's a different time, and it's a different. It's a different place. Gotcha. Okay. Where are we going? Well, this is. I just wanted to say this is um, our human services mm -hmm. uh, section. They're responsible for making sure people, individuals, get the assistance they're entitled to. FEMA folks. FEMA you're folks. About. Yeah. That's. And a, about how many FEMA people are working here at the disaster field office? Uh, well, about two hundred. About two hundred. What are some of their jobs? As we walk around? Um, well, by program, there's the human, there's the human services people, you know, who deliver, make sure people get their assistance if they call up and um, call up and register, if they're referred to another agency. There's a couple of big programs out there that FEMA administers, the housing program for people who had to leave their house and the mortgage and rental assistance for people who because can't pay their mortgage and rental assistance um, because of the impact of the disaster will help them with their mortgage and rental assistance. 
you know, that's just one, a couple of many programs that are out there from the voluntary agencies. Unemployment is a big program. People lost their jobs, as you know, as I'm sure you realize. Do yeah. you do you have any sense overall in terms of the financial assistance? How much FEMA has um, given yeah, out? As a well, for all the programs, we're close to a billion uh, billion dollars now. If you add in all the programs that we're funding and the money we've spent to date, but we'll be spending more. That number will continue to go up. There's no question about it. We'll continue taking a look around. All right, these are more human services people. For that close to $1 billion figure, do mm -hmm. you know how many people that it's spread out over? Oh, sure. Um, I mean, we have 52,000 people have called and uh, the FEMA teleregistration number to apply for assistance. Um, some of them are, depending on their need, are referred to other places. This is our public affairs uh, section. Um, for as far as housing goes, we've given over 25,000, 25 million you can just dollars. Come this way. All right. Um, mortgage and rental assistance. That's five million, and that will, you know, that will continue to grow. There's a grant program that the state administers, and that's um, a couple of million, two and a half million now. But that'll continue to grow too. Bob Riley's in the public affairs section right now. How have the, your interaction with the media, how has that changed in the four months that this has been going on? Well, the media have been very, very, uh, you know, responsive to the, to the story. At this stage, um, of course, you know, we want to continue to get coverage of what's out there and what's available. So um, we're going to go the extra mile to make sure that, you know, reporters get all the information that they need. Um, also, um, as happens in any disaster, you know, there are, are people who are going to the media who are disappointed with the assistance that we've gotten. And they've gotten, and those are people that we really need to reach out to, you know, and see what happened to them, if there was some misunderstanding, maybe they didn't get the, a piece of paper in that was needed. I mean, those are the people that, you know, we'll, we'll really work with. You talked about how many FEMA people are here in the Disaster Field Office. Do you have any numbers on how many FEMA personnel are in the city of New York as a whole? Um, a little under 400. And how does that compare to September or October? Oh, we were in the, we were in the thousands then. We were in the thousands then. Plus, if you added all the other federal agencies, you know, Department of Defense, I mean, just that USS Comfort, um, the urban search and rescue teams, the special communications people we brought in, we had a lot. We had like 5,000 feds um, in the city. Where are we now? Oh, where are we? Oh, we're, we're in public assistance. This is the big, are we going to go in? Or sure. sure. This is the um, public assistance um, office. Um, public assistance is the program that gets assistance to government. So they're paying for things like um, overtime and debris removal costs, and they'll be paying for reconstruction. What type of government agencies are you talking about? Well, city agencies, state agencies. Um, under this declaration, some of the, the surrounding, the counties in New York State are eligible if they sent, a lot of people sent resources in, like, you know, ambulances and fire trucks and they can be reimbursed also, you know, for their costs. Um, so this is a lot of money, and that's the FEMA Public Assistance Officer, Catherine Humphrey, and um, some, of, uh, some of her staff. But this, uh, this program um, um, will continue for, for a while as the claims are made. We can continue on. How long? Bye. Will this disaster field office continue to operate? Uh -huh. um, I think that, uh, let's see, this is January. Um, we will be here for at least another year. We may, our size requirements may shrink. Um, How has your size shrunk? in terms of the number of agencies, for instance, that we saw in the field office? Yeah. 
we have uh, we have many fewer now. Um, you can go in. You know, we have many fewer now because we had all those response agencies in there. Um, you know, we had Department of Defense. We had um, HHS. We had EPA. Um, we had the Corps of Engineers. But a lot of those agencies have completed their mission, or if they still have a mission, like EPA with the air monitoring, they're running it out of their regular office because there's not the need for daily coordination, you know. Um, what role is EPA playing now down? EPA in is, the city? is providing some uh, some um, support to the city that that FEMA is paying for through the President's Disaster Fund. The air monitoring, the wash stations down at the site, the um, they're helping the New York City Fire Department Hazardous Materials Unit um, identify and remove hazardous material from the from the site as they're discovered. Um, we're also so that's the EPA involvement. Um, HHS has provided a team, a small team still, to the um, medical examiner's office to supplement their staff um, in order to um, speed the identification of remains that that um, we've been able to retrieve. In the recovery efforts, if the Army Corps of Engineers, when we visited you in September, was at least in part responsible for the removal of the rubble, get it, clearing no, the, it. No. The city, the city is doing it now. The city is the city is doing it. In how many cases has the state or city taken over from what was once federal government responsibilities? Mm, a lot of things. They've taken over all the medical. Certainly, they've taken over. You know, all the uh, all the outside support for. Um, from outside fire departments, they've taken. And over. when you talk about taking over, do you mean financially responsible as well? Oh, they might be. It depends. They might be reimbursed for you know for for certain costs like the, like the rebuilding, but you know like the uh, uh, the debris removal at the site. Um, you know the city is is capable of doing that. They're overseeing that. They have one contractor. Um, they they are very they're very strong in in um, in that regard. So, what agencies aren't there? What's left? Point? Oh, okay. Well, this is the state office is back there. Um, this, you, you know, we're making a loop, as I'm sure you've seen. This is the New York City um, Mayor's Office of Emergency Management. Um, this is more of the public assistance people, uh, state and federal. These are our lawyers who are invaluable. Um, because you know, a lot of there are a lot of legal questions that arise, and then we're moving into um, we're you, moving into the small business administration area, which is between here and there. Do your numbers continue on a weekly basis to decline? Our if numbers people, of staff? Yeah. Um. No. No. Right now, we're kind of at the point where uh, um, we're stable. As a matter of fact, you know, we might bring in um, additional staff. Deep Depending upon you know what emerges that we need like specialists for, there are lots of specialists uh, out there, and also people are getting tired. Most people have rotated home, um, but we want to make sure people get a break. You, when we passed by the public assistance for the <laughs> FEMA folks, you talked about housing. Are there a lot of FEMA? Personnel who have been up here for the four months. Uh -huh. Oh sure. Oh yeah, a lot. I mean, I've been here. Of course, I live here. Um, a lot of people have have been here for four months. You know, they come and they go. Um, Is that typical for a FEMA operation? Yeah, I mean, we, continuity, particularly on an operation like this, continuity is important. Um, you know, so in so far as possible, we want the same people people back after they take a rotation or after they, after they go on for a holiday because believe me, you know, it's difficult to start working with a totally new person in some critical program area. I mean, usually what they do if they bring new people in, there's always an overlap. So there can be like an orientation and they can, the new person can get the feel for whatever it is they're going to be doing. You mentioned we're in the Small Business Administration mm -hmm. area. And they seem to have all gone home. <laughs> How has their role changed? since we saw you? 
In well, the they're sector. getting more. They're getting more loans. I mean, when you saw us, people were still in response. They weren't really, you know, applying for loans. So are they an agency where actually their activity has increased? Oh yeah, yeah. They're very, they're very busy. Um, I have the figures. Let me see. They've approved over over three thousand loans. How has life changed for you in the four months in your day-to-day -day work? Well, um, I, I have a different position. I have more responsibility than I did um, earlier on when I was chief of staff. Um, things have quieted down. We aren't working, you know, weekends. We're working normal hours, you know, which is good. What kind of hours were you working in the beginning? Oh, we were working, I mean, 12, 14, 14 hours, seven days a week. What's it like now? Oh, now it's like, you know, um, eight to five, you know, five days a week. Um, it's, you know, it's manageable, and if something comes up, of course, extra time is, uh, extra time is put in. What have you learned from all of this? Yeah, what have I learned from all of this? Um, and that's an interesting question. I'm not a very introspective uh, person. I've learned things about the operation, certainly. I've learned that, uh, that the federal response plan works. Um, all those agencies were able to come together and coordinate with each other in the state and the city. I mean, we've done it on hurricanes and we've done it on earthquakes, but, uh, you know, as we all know, we didn't have anything, we've never had anything like this before. Um, you know, and working with people, you know, you learn about their capabilities and their, their weaknesses and how you need to, uh, need to support them. Um, you know, you learn something about your own limits. Um, um, I learned Joe Alba, the director of the agency, is a powerful leader and a very compassionate man. You put a give a plug in for Joe Alba. I'm a fan of his. He's very good, very good. Um, so here we are, Lower Manhattan. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay, well, thank you. Thanks.